the jelly electrophoresis conditions. So another thing, uh, let's talk about the RFLP or restriction fragment length polymorphisms. It's a mouthful of name. Well, so restriction fragment means the, the fragment is generated by uh, the action of restriction enzyme. Length means it's a, it's a length of nucleotides and it's polymorphisms. Morphisms means the morphology of the DNA and it's poly. Means the morphology comes from different uh, sources. So it's a different morphological lens of the restriction fragments. That's uh, the actual meaning of that. How can you achieve different lengths of restriction fragments uh, in, 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 uh, in addition to add a simple restriction enzyme? For example, take two individuals. We have individual one, we have individual two. So in this individual one, it has its DNA, individual two, it has its own DNA too. So if we, if we add a specific amount of restriction enzyme and the same type of restriction enzyme in both cases for example we run eco r1 for example eco r1 in both cases to to make the work possible so we use eco r1 and for example we use bam h1 in this case also so we are using bam h1 because in normal cases in case of uh, this eukaryotic uh, uh, cellular uh, DNA breakdown we use we have to use many different uh, uh, di different restriction enzymes to cut them off and also use hindi 3 so hindi 3 is another so this 3 for example we use these 3 uh, types of restriction enzymes and use the ex exact same amounts we take the exact same amount of the DNA so this is their long uh, DNA in both these cases and after that let me change the color for this people I make the DNA straight away like that and for this I make it in another color with this green color which is my favorite again so this so th we have two different indiv individuals we cut uh, we use the same restriction enzyme to cut them so after using this en enzyme to cut the this their DNA what we find in this individual too we find the length of it is like that. We, we end up with four different segments. How can we know we end up with four different segments? Well, by running jelly electrophoresis. So we call them the restriction fragments now. So we have restriction fragments. We use the blotting technique to identify those genes. So we, we finally find uh, what we call uh, restriction fragment. Or we finally find a blot. We will we'll do blot later. But now let's think about the individual one. In the individual one, using the same sets of enzyme will end up to form these divisions okay so the same sets of restriction enzyme but they they make different number of copies of DNA as we know a restriction enzyme can cleave at the specific site of the DNA as we know in between two individuals of human we have a very very much similarity above 99 percent similarity and that suggests us it is 99.99 percent similarities between two individuals but that means it, there is also 0 .0, 0 0.001 percent dissimilarities between them and this experiment suggests us that, that in, in among those individuals they have some sim dissimilarities too, dissimilarities in their genome construction and small variations in their genome construction leads to the uh, different sequence in their genome and as they have different sequence in their genome the same uh, type of uh, restriction enzymes will cut uh, the different length of their genome that's how we can find in this electrophoresis so in the blot of our electrophoresis if we run this blot in our electrophoresis for example this is for individual 2 and this is for individual 1 if we run this electrophoresis here this is minus this is plus so this is minus this is plus we run this electrophoresis after running it when we found in this case we find we found this is a big uh, part a smaller one another smaller and smaller so we find four uh, segments in different four length places and in this case what we find we found, found almost uh, this to almost similar range another is this range so that will be the dissimilarities between the, their DNA structures we call them restriction fragment length polymorphisms or RFLPs so no matter how much we related to each other no single two persons are similar genetically they have some differences in their gen genomic content uh, this this uh, type of experiments is going to suggest us that okay and that's we can that we can determine with rflp technology restriction fragment and polymorphisms 
so uh, remember uh, so, so for example uh, we need to uh, look at uh, this which for example we need to study or need to distinguish between two different individuals how can we do it we can do it using this restriction fragment length polymorphisms we can we can take that DNA sample cleave with different uh, the same type of endonucleus and after we can run it and we after the running we can find it and not only in case of two individuals but we can also find out a disease with this how can we find this with this for example in case of sickle cell anemia there is a change between uh, the uh, one amino acid sequence and as we know the change in one amino acid sequence means there is some something change in, uh, in the, the base substitution takes place in uh, the genomic level and those ba due to the, those base substitution if we add different enzyme that will cut the, at the substitution region we will find different fragments and from those different fragments we can determine whether a person is having uh, allele for uh, for that disease or not we can determine with that so this is also important for